we're heading to Bristol and one of those breweries that seems to always do great beers and in great big cans. Yep, you know who it's gonna be. It's Arbor Ales. This is their can of their Shambhala. It's an India Pale Ale in this lovely purple pint-sized can. 568 mils of beer, tremendous. But it may be a big can of beer, but if it tastes rubbish, then it's not worth drinking, is it? But let's keep on watching to see what it's all about. Welcome back to Rocker's Beer Review. Today we're going to be reviewing another pint-sized can from Arbor and they're very, you know, their cans are massively striking. They've all got big, strong colours. They've got the little maple leaf on there and, you know, you they're very sort of, they, they've got a very strong brand. This is the Shambhala. It's just India Palau. Not much more about it. It says it's generously hot with Citra, Columbus, Equinot and Mosaic hops. And that's all we know, really. 6.8%. So it's a pretty big hitter in a big can of, uh, in a massive 568 mil or one pint in old money. Um, let's crack this open and get it into a, a big glass and uh, and see what it's all about. All we know, it's an Indian Palau, so I'm not sure if it's a New England or it's a, I don't think it'd be a West Coast. Looking at the sort of hops, but I'm not quite sure what to expect from it. Oh, it takes ages to pour it because it's such a big pint of beer. Brilliant. So, beer in a glass. Well, I mean, it's... At first, I thought it was very orangey, but when I sort of stand back, it's a little bit lighter in terms of orange. It's it's more the sort of what I'm now calling apricot coloured. Uh, so that sort of peachy apricot sort of lighter sort of... It's orangey, but it's... It's much light. It looks lighter actually in the flesh than it does on the camera. But if you look at the bottom of it, you can see how much lighter it looks, and it sort of gets a bit darker as you, as you go up the up the glass. Quite a lot of carbonation though, moving pretty quickly. We've got just about two fingers of head, and it's I wouldn't say it was compacted. It was fairly soapy sort of head. Looks pretty good. But let's see what it smells like. Mm, I'm getting a real sort of a real sweet aroma, sort of peachy, maybe even pineapple, but it's there's something very sweet smelling about it, you know, and it's like, it smells pretty good. It's really inviting. It's almost like a little bit of sort of bubble gum sort of aroma in it. And it's got, I mean, it's got mosaic, which can give that sort of bubble gum aroma. Yeah, I'd say that was that was quite strong in the aroma, that sort of bubblegum sort of aroma. I'm interested to see what this one's going to be like. So let's tuck in. Cheers, everyone. Really smooth. Lovely soft mouthfeel. Actually, I thought it might be a bit carbonated because there was a lot of carbonation going on when it was poured out. The carbonation is quite soft. There's a little bit of, hmm, I'm gonna to have to go in again to describe this. There's a lot, it's, it's, it's quite different. So we're getting passion fruit and orange. We get a mango. We're getting citrus, we're getting grapefruit, we're getting pininess. It's a really good IPA though. There's a, there's a, there's a, so much going on in this beer. There is a sort of a little much more. I mean, um, I've you may have noticed from the clothes or whatever, but I, I've just drank the um, before this one the the Quantock one. Um, so hopefully you've seen that review. That was a New England IPA, and that. I sort of talked in that one saying it was very sort of stone fruits, but much more, but quite fresh. And But this one's got a little bit more sort of earthiness to it, a little bit more dankness. And I think that's the, the Equinot hop. That, that I think that's what Equinot brings to the party. It's It's got that sort of... Um, it's much more passion fruit in there. Passion fruit is the big flavour, I think. 
passion fruit, slightly orangey. There's a little bit of bitterness from like from the orange rind. Then you get like a lemony grapefruit, pininess. Yeah, and you don't, you know, when I had that aroma, and I thought, yeah, there was a sort of bubblegummy sort of aroma. I'm not really getting any of that in the sort of taste at all. It's it's much more of a sort of danker, over-ripened fruit flavour, this mango, really over, really over-riped mango. Maybe a little bit of apricot flavour in there. Maybe a little bit of lychee, something a little bit sort of, a bit different than you, than you this difficult, because you don't taste that sort of fruit flavour that much. It's something that's a, a little bit different that's sort of nagging away at the back of your mind, thinking, what is that? It's something a bit different. Yeah. And there's this sort of quite a an earthy pininess, I think. But it's 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 quite sort of um yeah, I mean earthy is the best way to describe it really. It, it feels like a real sort of solid, chewy type of beer. It's like those IPAs, we don't have many of them actually on the channel, but I remember, you know, we've had some in the in the past. They're the top end of that sort of, you know, they're, they're kicking 7%. They've got this sort of fruitness on the front end, but then whoosh, a whoosh of bitterness. And you think, yeah, this is a, definitely a drinking a beer, not a, not a juice bomb, as it were. And this is what this is one's all about. It's got quite a lot of hops going on. There's a little bit of sort of warmth, not from, the, I don't think from the alcohol, but from, from the hop burn. It's an, it's an interesting beer, this. Yeah, it's definitely, it's one of those sort of IPAs that is almost like a little bit of one foot in the sort of old school in terms of IPA. When you first taste it and you smell it, you think, yeah, this is another going to be a big juice bomb, big tropical hits of fruits. And you are getting that. But as soon as you get that, you get this sort of earthy bitterness that sort of a little bit of pine needles, a bit, a bit of resin, that sort of, that sort of flavour that's sort of like, makes you know that you're drinking a beer. It's got that real sort of, almost that hoppiness in the, on the back end. But it's a pretty good beer. You know there's a lot of hops going into this. Full of flavour, really loads going for it. It's a it's another great beer from Arba. And of course, it's in a massive pint can. This was a four quid, which, you know, in a bottle shop, my bottle shop, that's, that's quite high, not, I mean, it's not high up when you go and when I buy stuff like from Vedant and Day and stuff, I'm paying five and a half quid and plus sort of thing. But four quid for a pint can, actually that's pretty good value for money. There's a lot of hops going into this. It's a very well brewed beer, but it's quite different. It's not New England by any chance, but it's not West Coast either. It's got that softness of a New England, but it has that sort of uh, West Coast bitterness bite to it, that earthiness to it as well. But it's a good, good beer. Let's get some scores. Okay, the scores are in for Arbor's Shambhala in India Palau IPA. Generously hop with Citra, Columbus, Equinot and Mosaic hops. There's something a little bit different, a little bit more earthy, a little bit more bitterness. But it's not a West Coast beer, but it's not a New England. It's one of those sort of hybrids, really. I mean, to look at it, it looks like a sort of almost like a New England IPA. But it's not. It's not a New England IPA. But let's go through the, through the scores. First things first, aroma. Well, the big thing with, with it, you get this sort of almost like this bubblegummy sort of aroma and then a sort of dankness and for me that's it's got mosaic in it and for me that's very characteristic of mosaic um it doesn't have it, you know it's got citra in it there's not many characteristics of, of citra for me there's that sort of bubble gum and a, and a real sort of dank mango sort of aroma um and this sort of yeah it's just the way, best way to describe it is an earthy sort of earthy smell, a real sort of strong, dank sort of smell, which isn't, which it, you, it's definitely got a strong aroma, but it's not, 
it's not as inviting it's not as fresh it's not as citrusy and and zesty and and, and has those those you know you're in for a big hop hoppy beer and it's got a big hoppy aroma so i'm giving it a 12 for aroma which is probably not as high as it should be but but for me it doesn't it doesn't make you you don't smell anything oh i can't wait to get tucked into this it's got that bub, bubble gummy sort of aroma is not i don't think is that appealing for, for me in terms of beer um so i'm giving it a 12 for aroma appearance well i mean it's it's very much your apricot colored beer sort of a sort of a cloudy very hazy as i throw the beer all across the across the room um orangey sort of it's a light orange, I, I would say. As I said, apricot is the best sort of colour to describe that. You can see the lace in the glass. I mean, look at this. Look at the state of that. Um, we've got literally a half finger of head that seems to be retained. It looks pretty good, and I'm giving it a solid eight out of ten for appearance, flavour wise. Well, like the aroma, you get a real dank mango flavour on the front end. And you're getting that real earthiness. I mean, it doesn't. It, you you get that sort of dry bitterness on the as well coming in, as it cut as you sort of as you drink it. And then you get you get waves of passion fruit and orange flavour. But the orange is much more the sort of orange rind, the bitter, and that's where we get a lot of the bitterness from. And then there's little little dashes really of uh, of pininess in it as well. It's for me, it's got this West Coast sort of flavour, but the mouthfeel is very East Coast. It's soft, low levels of carbonation. It's very, very smooth in terms of a beer, but it's very hop forward. It's a big hoppy beer. Is that what modern craft beer is all around? About well, probably you probably that's what it is, and and that's what this beer is. Six point eight percent. I think it's got a solid flavour. If you want to drink a beer where you're getting those tropical notes up front, but you want to know that it's a beer, you want a little bit of that earthiness, you want that bitterness, that 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 beer flavour, it, it, it's the best way to describe it, that sort of flavour that says you're drinking a beer. And you get that, you get that dryness, as if you were drinking a sort of a German Pilsner, that sort of that sort of feeling in the back of the throat where it sort of really dries, dries out the throat and you just want to keep drinking it has that sort of um that that's the sort of effect it has on me anyway so it's a solid flavor the flavor wise i'm giving it a solid 32 out of 40. it's a nice flavor but it's but if i was going if i was being picky which let's face it i'm, I'm reviewing a beer so i can be picky i'd like a little bit more fresh zestiness about it I and mean, you're not getting that you're getting a more a dank bitterness really so 32 for flavor but value for money, it's a pint can, four quid. You're getting a lot of beer for your money. There's a lot of hops going into this. You can taste the hop. It's a very hop forward beer. So I think it's good value for money. I'm giving it a nine out of 10. And then my overall experience, it's a nice beer. It's not my favourite sort of style. It's the, the softness of it. And the sort of low, low, you know, the carbonation is quite low, are real big pluses. But there's a real dank feeling about it. And it's getting to that point where it, it's almost like the dry bitterness on the back end can be a little bit off-putting to some people. But some people might really like that. If, you, if, you, if you've got any sort of, if you like the odd West Coast or you like lots of West Coasts, and sometimes you just want something a little bit more softer on the mouthfeel then this is a top but this is this would be right up your street because this is what it is it, it is it's like a new england style on the mouthfeel and the body but a west coast in terms of the flavor there's a real earthiness about it there's a real bitterness that sort of jumps in on the on on that back end and it and i say it's on the back end but it's sort of after you get across that sort of mango passion fruit flavor when you first taste it the earthiness, the bitterness comes in a huge wave, really. Um, but to me, I'm quite surprised how quickly I'm drinking it. Because it dries out the throat and it makes it 
makes you want to keep drinking it. And then obviously then, then you get even more dry. But I'm giving it 12 for overall because it's not my ideal style. I like something a little bit more zestier. You've seen my reviews. I like something a little bit more zestier, fresher, fruitier. I'm getting a lot more dankness with this beer. It's like a, it's it's getting to that point where I feel like I've had a beer like this before, but it was a double IPA. So 12 for overall. I'm going to top those scores up and get 73. Still recommended. It's a lower level sort of white snake beer. It's a slide in and slow and easy. And that's what you should do with this beer because if you keep drinking it quickly, 6.8%, you can get into a lot of trouble. It's a nice beer and it's an Arbor Ales. It's, it's not the best Arbor Ale, I'll, I'll, I'll say that. I still, I really like the Massive Hazaka. I like the Gal Galazaka as well. Um, Space Hardware, that was pretty good. Zero Zero is pretty good. This isn't bad, but it's much more a traditional sort of IPA in terms of its flavour profile. But let me know what you think. If you've had Shambhala before, let me know what you think. I was going to, there was this one in the shop, Shambhala was this one, and I was also going to go for the Citra Maximus. I think that would have been a lot lighter, sort of zestier, sort of much more citrusy, obviously, um, flavour. But I, I went for this one pretty much blind because it didn't tell me much about it. And it's it's a solid, solid beer, hop forward, pretty good. Give it a go. It's a lovely big pint can, so what can go wrong? So 73 out of 100. Hope you've enjoyed this review, and until the next one, keep on rocking.